Welcome to Checkpoint Real Talk, a podcast for security folks who want less F-U-D and more F-U-N. In each episode, we'll have lighthearted conversations about security, people, processes, and technology as we react to how they're portrayed in film and TV. We'll bring in experts from inside and outside Checkpoint to break it down. What was accurate? What wasn't? And what can you apply to real-world cyber events? On today's episode, host Sia Yasutornrat, Checkpoint Cloud Security Architect Alfred Trevino, and Brad Gorka, CISO and Information Security Leader, react to the 1998 film Enemy of the State. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Checkpoint Real Talk. Today, I am joined by Brad and Alfred. Guys, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. All right. So I know there's been so many great suggestions of, oh, guys, you guys need to check out this movie or this TV show, etc. But like the number one request we've gotten so far is this little movie called Enemy of the State. You guys heard of it before? 90s classic. Definitely. Okay. Wonderful. I'm glad you guys nod in approval that you know what it is because I have actually never seen it. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've seen it, but but I do remember it. Yeah. Alfred, when's the last time you've seen it? Um, actually about two or three weeks ago. Um, for nostalgia reasons, I saw it and I was like, oh, you know what? Let me check it out. But there's some cool, totally relevant um, scenarios and situations. So it'll be good. Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. So it's like fresh in your memory and Brad, it's going to be kind of what you've remembered and fondly remember. And me, it's going to be my literal first time guys. So uh, if my comments going to, it's going to be a real, like, wow, I feel like one of those like slackers that listen to like old school, like, I don't know, Fleetwood Mac. And they're like, never heard of it. And I'm like, how could you have never heard Fleetwood Mac? I, I suspect is what a lot of people are going to say about me right now. So, um, well, I would like to, for us, if you guys don't mind, to kick off with uh, the trailer. And the reason why I want to start off with the trailer is because that's the pitch, right? That's the Hollywood, let's get everyone's attention and check it out type um, um, video montage, if you will. So let's see uh, how truthful, honest uh, this, this trailer is going to be, guys. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead. Hey, hi. So you want some lingerie for your wife? She's a six. What about cup size? I'm sorry? Oh, oh, she's way bigger than that. I mean, uh, not noticeably. Hello? It's Robert Clayton Dean. Hi, that was my Christmas present? In your dreams, buddy. Dad. A loving husband. You are the only woman in the world for me. You and Janet Jackson. <laughs> An ordinary citizen. We believe that sensitive materials may have passed to you. Will become. What kind of materials? A wanted man. <laughs> Let's get into his life. He's on your six o'clock. You have something they want. New targets for the time. I don't have anything. Produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Target switch. Directed by Tony Scott. Stop it now. Will Smith. Certainly carjacked a really nice car. Gene Hackman. Get rid of your clothes, all of them. What the hell is happening? I blew up the building. Why? Because you made a phone call. The enemy is everywhere. Enemy of the state. You want to take a poke at me? I don't hate senior citizens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first off, <laughs> is it really responsible to blow up a building because of a phone call? <laughs> that was like that really popped out at me. <laughs> if that's what it takes, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I don't know what this movie's about. Okay, based on that, it feels like uh, what they're trying to articulate is some Will Smith is some fish out of the water pulled into some intrigue, and Gene Hackman's pulling him out, saving him. Is that the deal? Mm. Plus, like Gene Hackman is your, I'll say this in the most best way, typical conspiracy theory, but he knows what he's talking about, right? He knows what's going on out there. Will Smith uh, is is um, accidentally part of this whole montage of government, uh, political espionage. Um, and there's a few scenes in the movie where he gets information that he doesn't even really know. And so um, like us today, right? We get all this information from our phones. We get it from our tablets and, you know, uh, like that seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, what actually wasn't, he didn't care about or wasn't concerned with. 
is more relevant today because of the, the compute power and just the, you know, the analytics of what we're doing now. But it does take that that large look of, hey, how can one person uh, be like the centerpiece of all of this government conspiracy, political agenda, whatever you want to call it? Um, and then, you know, where does he go from there? And at that time, there's no like, um, uh, you know, how do I get out of this? Right. How do what am I going to do next? His cards are being uh, yanked. Um, it it's um, I think back then it might be a little bit difficult for others out there that aren't familiar with that area to really get intrigued by it. But I think those that were out there back then are just like, oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Like these are the little things that we talk about and uh, like the whole social engineering aspect of it. Yeah, I think uh, the peril of the whole thing and it and it's, you know, enemy of the state and you talk about the state and security, we talk about um, state threats and how if you do get targeted by a state actor, uh, it doesn't matter how much money you spend or how strong your security program is, you're going down because the state in theory has unlimited resources and technology that's not even available in the commercial sector and everything. So I think that is kind of a, an interesting analogy. And and if you did have to go up against a, a state actor like that, um, good luck. Good okay. Luck. So like, okay, as a small business owner, as a citizen of earth, I, I feel like at times uh, just from a cybersecurity perspective in general, I do feel like when you have nation states attacking us civilians um, trying to go after our infrastructure, et cetera, or just simply just by virtue of our poor hygiene, as far as our own security, you know, readiness. Um, I feel like I'm an enemy of the state. Am I, am I being paranoid? You guys like, no, we're just collateral really. Like we are, we're going to be collateral for all the damage that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean like the, uh, the OPM breach, I mean, they weren't after every single one of those individuals in there, but um, you know, there probably were some very important targets and, a lot of what's in there could be great information for down the road for somebody else they they decide they want to target. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of collateral damage. But, um, you know, I do kind of a- agree with you that um, there's just so many targets to go after. And, you know, I think there's probably more disruption that could be orchestrated and executed upon. Mm-hmm. But as we move uh, as a, quote, society, civil, maybe not so civil society, we're moving uh, it almost feels like away from kinetic war and into more cyber war. Um, you know, I don't know if it'll, you know, probably not fully transition in my lifetime, but you know, that's, that's where these things are taking place. So maybe they haven't hacked all the critical infrastructure, but maybe they've got enough tools and enough information at their disposal that if they wanted to execute an attack, they could do it because there's people collecting all this information and, and, you know, setting up back doors and whatever else and just, just hanging on to them. So you just mentioned something that might be a future episode, which is, uh, was it a uh, collateral damage, right? Is that the, is that the other oh, movie? One. Yeah. 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 An- another movie I have not seen. <laughs> oh gosh, guys. Okay. So I, I really appreciate the, okay. So that's our initial insights and our thoughts. Um, I say, let's move on to our next clip and let's see uh, that it's going to hone us in a little bit more uh, specifically to our areas of interest, which is again, technology and cybersecurity. And it's going to be about discovering tracking devices, apparently. So here we go. Got I hate elevators. Here. Wow, that's pretty Elevate. nice. Just in an elevator. We're losing our tracking. Anybody Maybe. got a visual? We need to move location and get a better signal. Are you guys there? Yeah. Negative. Some of these actors are so young. Jack Gotta have the surveillance van. Separate. Yeah, there's so many. It's an eclectic cast. What the fuck is going on? Wait, they stopped. Wait, is Gene Hackman a spy or a conspiracy theorist? He's like the conspiracy theorist, knowing what's going on. Yeah, I've been uh, around the government, military. Oh, it's got the uh, plastic slash foil chip bag. Nice. Mm-hmm. The RFID, uh, yeah. like blocking, right? Yeah. Faraday, K, a little Faraday. Yeah. Oh, nice detail. 
Is that really enough to be a Faraday? No. <laughs> Even in 1998, you know, the cell phones had a lot better reception back then, so probably wouldn't work. Five are on their way up. He's getting help, hey, we, boys. He's getting help. We have to arrange. We have those today, no right? Like Kyle's. We have Kyle's everywhere. <laughs> you could crack me pretty easy. On the rooftop northeast corner chambers and light. Copy that. Rooftop northeast corner chambers and light. There are any federal agents you had following you on that ferry? Do they have GPS uh, inside the work. building now? I'm not worried about me. Maybe. Can ask about that. Do they know me? Who is that? Do they know me? I don't know what you're talking about. You can't handle the truth. One movie, I know. Get off. Come on. I've got separating signals here. Tracer 3 is on its way down. 4 and 5 are still together. Where did he go? We didn't have, do we have a very no height? Who that for you? Rachel did. Wait, who was that up Yeah, elevation, definitely. Say? Um, but yeah. I don't know say about... I know that there's a plus and minus. You say and he picked up on it. Come on, think. Okay. Shit, I said it. God damn it. You see, that's why I have rules. That's what's all this about, Pintero. You think the mob uses devices like this? Maybe not yet, but I'm sure today. Excuse me, sir. Where are you, elevators? Right over there. In your phone with a GPS sat tracker. Pulses at 24 gigahertz. I don't know what that means. Don't you think they'd have some eyes on the building and have one of those, like, like big dishes that, that can record the, the audio? Not that well. Kind of a jerk, aren't you? It means the NSA can read the time off your wristwatch. All right, enough of this. Right now, you either shoot me or tell me what the f is going on. Right. You don't have to Cold beat that, huh? My the National Security Agency conducts worldwide surveillance, fax, phones, satellite communication. The only ones in the country, including the military, could possibly have anything like that. Waving the gun around well, wouldn't attract any attention. I don't know, I don't <laughs> you know there's video surveillance on these cam uh, rooftops. This is their one. Oh. Coordinates. There they are. 105 Chambers Avenue. You're transmitting. They still have a signal on you. Your collar, your belt, your zipper. Get rid of your clothes, all of them. But well, then what am I supposed to do? Nothing. You live another day, I'll be very impressed. Two targets rooftop, north side. Understood, two targets rooftop. Maintain visual, please. You have something they want. But I don't have anything. Maybe you do and you don't know it. You stay away from Rachel and you stay away from me. You come near either one of us, I'm going to kill you. Get rid of your watch. My wife gave me this for our anniversary. Then keep it. Stay off the phone. Wait a minute. He just committed suicide Before here. He learned to fly. Air one, stay with him. Target's on the move. Satellite imagery coming through. Okay, gentlemen, we're back online. Okay, wireframe download complete. All right, we have a tracer in the stairwell on 20, traveling down. 19, 18. How did we get the architecture of the building? They went and installed a bunch of uh, GPS antenna and, and transmitters inside the building. They knew they'd be there? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, that one building, they knew it in advance. I I will say back in the day, so um, I did physical security before I did cybersecurity. And um, late 90s or mid 90s, we were starting to dabble with, uh, uh, you know, Windows NT and actually having it so integrated, right? And it was mm -hmm. elevator security, floor security, all that stuff, hand scans and all that. But, um, you know, they did have their like, just like on the phone, or I'm sorry, on the Wi Fi is where you can have your little architectural drawing, right? And your blueprint and have all your access points and whatever you want inside there. <laughs> it, it was to a level there, but not everybody had it. Um, but boy, like knowing what I know back then and how it started, I could only imagine what it is today. Like, I mean, they can get it down pretty good. It takes yeah. about well, in, in in building GPS is like everywhere. I mean, it's a Home yeah. Depot when you go. It helps you with their app and when you're shopping. So that's. I just used it at uh, I think it was Walmart. I was like, oh my gosh, they got this little, uh, you know, your little A two, A three, whatever aisle you're yeah. going. Through. But I went down the path to figure out. I wonder if how they're actually what technology they're using, and it is. It's GPS triangulation with yep. it. Like, Ooh, look at that. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. It's I probably mean, cheap it's now cool? too. Is it cool, guys? Because I don't know. Uh, if I, want to be uh, um, I never turned GPS on. 
It's cool from a convenience factor, but we know security yeah. convenience doesn't necessarily change. As a security professional, I leave all that stuff turned off. Man, yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, okay, I understand. And, and I've actually said this in many different like uh, shows that I've I've been on and whatnot, but I have a theory and my premise is that humans are inherently lazy and we are yeah. all about OSPF, open shortest path first. And uh-huh. I fear that our desire for convenience will usher in much more of this surveillance, much more of this. I don't mind giving my data freely because I'm just not wanting to deal with details yeah. of, of my data. No, absolutely. I mean, and I've, I've said that for a very long time and I, I have a background in psychology as well. And I, I totally recognize that humans are by their nature, somewhat lazy and they want the easiest path. And that's why things like chatbots have become so popular because, you know, I, I, I used to be a, in, in IT and I'd write all these KB articles and, you know, walkthroughs and videos and how to's and, and stuff where people could self-service their, a lot of their IT needs. And they would still just hit me up on instant messenger and just say, Hey, how do I do this? And it's like, well, here's the link. Well, I don't want to read the link. Can't you just tell me, I don't, I don't want to read the three pages when there's only two sentences that I care about in here. And so when a lot of these, like, like the Amazon chat bot is great. Like I remember a couple of years ago experiencing, I was, I had a problem with an issue or whatever. And it was like, I'll bet you're asking about this recent order. Well, yeah, I am. I'll bet you're asking where it's at in the shipping. Yeah, actually I am. And so all I had to do was like th- click three times and I, I had exactly what I was after. And so there's, there's other technology today where, you know, this human will just, here's my question, just give me the answer. I don't want to read a bunch of stuff. And so that that's for real. It is. Definitely. Okay. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, well, I apologize. No, I, I'm all for, again, I think there's something that can be automated, should be automated that we can grab quickly. But I wonder and I worry that that replacement that, you know, the whole bot chat, GPT, GPT-4, BARD, all those, all those, you know, um, bots, for lack of a better term, AI bots. Um, I, I worry when we stop caring that we're talking to a bot and we just assume it's a bot when there's actually humans behind it. Like the one thing that makes us humans I fear we're giving that away, which is having complex conversations, thought, emotions, et cetera, and we're articulating it to one another. Um, do you think we care? I think so, but I think the COVID issue and the pandemic that drove everyone into isolation kind of artificially got us there very quickly. And, you know, a lot of a lot of people work from home full time now. And a lot of companies are kind of doing a remote first kind of thing, but uh humans throughout all of time have been social beings that tend to congregate in groups together largely and so i think that over the next year or two or three years you're going to see people start to become a bit more tired of being at home and want to be around some other people and you know probably not a popular opinion but i i think there will be people that want to get back to an office of some some sort and be around some people. I, I happen to be one of those folks, but um, you know, I, I think that social interaction is good. I think it's good for business and people in general and for our psychological health too. Yeah. I've telecommuted for 20 years. So I, but again, full disclosure, I was in sales. So if I felt that compulsion or need to be around humans, I would just go go on a sales call. <laughs> yeah. Or, but, you know, invite some folks out to a dinner or put some yeah. kind of social gathering together. Yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. Okay. But if well, you're I, writing, if you're writing software and just, you know, tapping away at a keyboard all day, then that's, that's a little bit different. Yeah. I think there's also, yeah, I think you I, I think I agree with you, Brad. There's definitely, definitely something to that. So um, I know we're digressing a little bit. So, and so on that good spirit of us wanting to, Oh, I don't know, bond with others and be around others. <laughs> let's look at, that voyeuristic side of us then, because our next clip is, is titled Trusted Surveillance. Uh, this one is, again, uh, I'm very interested because I see a satellite as the opening scene. So are you guys ready for our, our next? Ready. Yep. All right. Let's check out the voyeuristic side of us as we look at surveillance. Taylor, it's Hicks. I need an intercept on a Daniel Leon Zavitz, 202 555 
What's our authorization? Check what? We're calling it a P1 mm -hmm. training op, FBI approval. To the Telecommunications Security and Privacy Act. News desk. Lenny, you are not going to believe what I have in my possession. Zavitz, long time. Lenny, I've got the Phil Hammersley murder on videotape. Phil Hammersley died of a heart attack. Negative. Hammersley was professionally wasted under the direction of some anal retentive with what looks like a serious vitamin B deficiency. Well, how did you get this tape? My conservation study at the lake photographed the murder. You're kidding me. The camera was aimed straight across at the pier, right where Phil Hammersley was killed. How fast can you get that tape over here? I'm making a copy right now. Put a That's Ant-Man. And give us a dedicated satellite for oh this operation. Gosh. It's already done. Fiedler, is this line secure? Yes, it is, sir. Okay, satellite imagery coming through. Roger that patch visual, my location. Confirm visual, thank you much. Everyone there? All units target heading north on rooftop. Columbian 18th request immediate visual support, over. Roger that, we have visual. Zavitz, <laughs> Daniel Zavitz. Hey, uh, it's me, Bobby Dean. We were at Georgetown together. You okay? Help me. What do you Are think you of right? this one, sir? Yeah, this is Becky. Becky, say hi. Okay. Wow. Okay, first off, just a little shout out. Maybe we're playing more Chiba in the background on that little sexy, sexy scene. Maybe listen to this. <laughs> just throwing that up out there. <laughs> so, okay. What was going on there, guys? Well, apparently the government is capable of monitoring and recording every voice call that exists in real time. <laughs> sure, that's real. <laughs> and then we've got the handoff, right? The uh, social engineering aspect of it where yeah. we, we see Jason Lee there giving an item or putting it into the bag uh, for, uh, it was for uh, Will Smith. Yes. Okay, I'm confused. Who's on what side? Like, what? What is is Will Smith just like a pawn, and these two are playing with each other? Is that just innocent deal? bystander? That is it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and so the Jason Lee crew—they're bad guys. No, bad guys? they're actually like university folks, or they—they're doing a study, and they. What happened uh, previous to the scene was um, was a gentleman was killed. And it was filmed because of Jason Lee's like video surveillance that they're doing over this like pond uh, studying ducks. And so he looks at the video and was like, whoa, I got all of this on tape. I got to do something with it. And that's yeah, video of the congressman getting whacked by NSA agents. And did he realize it was NSA or just thought it was like bad, just random bad guys? I, I don't think he knew at that point, right? Okay. And, and 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 Jason Lee is just like some kind of like professor guy doing a study. Mm -hmm. How do these guys suddenly become like spy, know all the nuances and all that then? I'm confused. Well, that's where the Gene Hackman character, I think, comes in to try and rescue Will Smith. Yes. Okay. He's kind of connecting all the dots for everything going on because Will Smith is he is very confused, has no idea what's going on. Not very much on the electronic side or technology side. Um, and it shows in the movie um, when his wife is just the opposite. She's the one like, hey, you know, the government's tracking. You You know, you, they can do this. And he's like, I don't care about that. Blah, blah, blah. Why should that? Why should I care? Right. Yeah. I've all that before. Yeah. I mean, it just definitely lends itself to this whole deep state mythology or or whatever following that you want to call it out there and that's become a lot more kind of popularized than the past couple of years certainly movies like this kind of help help uh, fantasize a lot of it but you know we continue to see movies like this i mean mm -hmm. people certainly believe that the government can and does surveil common citizens or you know other people that they want to go after and you know maybe um maybe a bit of skepticism is a a good idea to to kind of keep your guard up a little bit but I try not to worry or live in that space too much at all. It'll, it'll drive you crazy. It will. I, I'm the same way, Brad. I, I, uh, right. I always try to do some pre, pre, pre checks. And then I do my post, post, yeah. post check. And my call up. <laughs> it's like, where does it end? Um, yeah. but no, I, I do. I try to, I go by like the little stuff that I got taught early on. I wouldn't put anything out there that I wouldn't want my grandma to see. Right. Or something like that. Right. It's, 
Yeah. Um, I try to do the best practice with financial thing, you know, things that a lot of that stuff hasn't changed on like best practice and, and having good hygiene uh, online and putting your stuff out there in the social media sites and et cetera. But um, I do, I try to practice the little things that I can, because at the end of the day, uh, as we mentioned earlier, cool. if you're a state actor, uh, there's, you, you know, whether yeah. you're directly involved or indirectly involved, there's not much you can really do. Yeah. I, but I don't think though that federal agencies would really require this insanely robust surveillance capability today. They would just need no. a bunch of hackers and computer people because they don't need to go do all this legwork to figure out what you're doing day to day. They could just hack your Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and everything else. And they could, they could find it then they pull your, you know, pull your location off your phone. So it's like, you don't, you don't really need all these sensors and no. antennas and, and you know, the, uh, the non, oh, yeah. the, the discrete surveillance van and all, you just don't need that. No. And you know, another thing I was thinking about was back then, because I can put my bad hat on, but it was so easy to get away with bad stuff back then, right? Yeah. Um, hey, where we're where everybody's got a phone and a professional set of video photography with them at all times, and your yeah. favorite drivers and your your you know your voice uh, your videos out in your 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 commutes and everything else. It's like it's not as um, convenient for the uh-huh. uh, folks to do what they need to do sometimes when we look at these videos back then. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's amazing to where it's at right now, the little resources that you need. I mean, we willingly put ourselves up and out there, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. every time we post on any social media platform, it doesn't have to be TikTok people. It, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter. It could be American yep. <laughs> based, you know, uh, business. Uh, y- you could probably social engineer someone's entire life. You know, what it reminds me of is, and I, I think I'm obsessed with them, even though I can't stand it, is Black Mirror. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, hey, yeah, that's a good. That's, yeah, that's with that damn TV show, but it's so close to home that's like a little too close. You know, that sounds like ooh. It does. Um, it hit close, doesn't it? Well, because they they did it intentionally. Like they did a future where it's just enough for you to be like, ooh, you could be living this. Mm-hmm. And I forgot the episode, and I I keep mentioning it because it's one. Of, I, I actually really liked the idea, and it made me think a lot. That's what that show does is make me think, which is really a frightening thing to do. If you guys know anything about me. Right? <laughs> But uh, it, the video one, the the recorded video, it was an early, early. Uh, that, black yeah, that's part of, I think, season one or season two. But yeah. not, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. But that that's, one's frightening. Yeah, the, those yeah, yeah. Two. that one is where you've got a chip in your brain and everyone has it. And then like going through TSA and they review your freaking like. Brrr, so it's like computer to computer talking to each other as humans, just looking at each other. That's weird. They can like see their entire day and with whom they've spoken with. Um, that's freaky. Oh yeah. The, the one I was actually alluding to was, was a couple and the husband dies early on. And then she, uh, there's a service apparently that basically makes him a doll and takes all his social media posts. And that's like oh. a filtered version of him. And I think that's so weird because it's creepy. Uh, yeah. Th- yeah. I was working on a project kind of based around that to leave my kids something, which is along those lines of being creepy. Right. It's, um, um yeah i i I can't say too much of it because it's a it's a it's a it's a intellectual property thing i'm thinking of but um it is quite along those lines i haven't even seen that that episode yet but i want to see it now oh yeah i i I have to well uh domino gleason is the actor uh i do remember that and he's uh he was what um in star wars one of the star wars is as a general something or the other the annoying general I know. I'm not sure. Watch. Yeah, he he plays a baddie baddie. Anyway, so hey, I digress. But that being said, is this is yeah, with all of our data that we're willing to put up and out there, it probably doesn't take a lot of difficulty for someone to figure out our passwords, right? Because again, yeah. human humans have a tendency to do like their dog's name or blo- whatever, right? Or yeah. cat's name or wife's name or child's name or whatever. Or Actually, I just saw this on the other day. One, two, three, four, five, six is still the most popular password out there. It's like the combination of my luggage. (laughs) (laughs) Baseballs. Yeah. (laughs) Great movie. Oh, my gosh, right? Um, No, and you just brought something up there, too. The um, And and it is. It's like there's a part of me that kind of knows, like, 
if they want something, they're going to get it. And I'm not saying that I just blatantly throw information out there, but in all reality, we know that directly or indirectly, um, you could be the low hanging fruit next, you know, next to your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your mm-hmm. neighbor, whatever the case may be. It just takes that weakest link. And yeah. what used to take so long, 20, 30 years ago, to aggregate that information, correlate it back, right, with, yeah. some, with some crazy algorithms, it's there. Like, we have it at uh, hackers and bad folks and good folks have it at our fingertips, where what would take, like, years and take that off the plate, now it can take minutes. Like, yeah, and there's, you know, that information could be used in court cases as well. There was, uh, I think, someone that was recent, not recently, it's been a little bit, but um they brought Fitbit location data to a trial to convict him for murder. Yep, there you go. And, um, you know, there's um, all, you know, these DNA and genealogy testing services that are out there, which, you know, the idea is really novel, but, you know, people are getting busted for murder for that thing, you know, and maybe it wasn't that person's DNA, but it was their brother or sister or something. And now they've, uh, they're, um, kind of suspect pull has become extremely slow at that point. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's out there. They just got to subpoena. It. Exactly. Oh yeah. Actually, I just saw a, 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 a lawyer again, those short videos that are really popular, uh, a lawyer saying, Hey, if you're going to get interrogated by cops, do not offer or do not drink the water uh, out of their cups because they can take, yeah. DNA. they can legally take your DNA from that, but it's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. So speaking of, Stealing and taking your DNA and all that wonderful good stuff. Um, let's let's chat about the um, hacking then, because hacking has been, you know, again, whether it's you know, uh, white hat, black hat, and all that good hat, gray hat, pink hat, purple hat, and blue. I'm just making things up here now at this point. But the idea around hacking is, I think, in the in the zeitgeist, it is considered oh negative or it's some malicious person doing malicious intent. Now, obviously, there's different nuances to that. But all right, so this one here, it looks like uh, another trusted surveillance, and uh, let's let's check this out, you guys. Ready? Like you're mentioning, Brad, we don't even need to go through all this. Anymore. <laughs> I mean, no. Great. Just hack the NAST or Alexa, yeah. whatever you got. What the hell are we here? We just happen to have the right watch. I think we have a winner. Phone I'm sorry, what's going on? So they're matching it switching out the Black. watch phone perfect and how's that look thank you mr dean we have you bugged it mr dean blow over i'm not i'm not gonna sit around and wait for this to blow over jerry i i'm i'm suing their right wing asses right into chapter 11. this is flagrant they never even called to see what my side of the story was they have no sullivan protection with this mr dean yes rachel banks is online one and uh silverberg and blake would like to see you in the conference room oh, uh, jerry uh, I don't know. Reporters are calling asking me about my relationship with you and how long I've worked for the mop. It's about Rachel Banks. I'll tell you what, uh, she was my girlfriend the second year of law school. We keep in touch. We, we toss one another some work every once in a while. Uh, that's it. Did you have an affair with her four years ago? You ever beat off in the shower, Brian? Mm, you ever have any homosexual thoughts? Bobby, that is none of my f- business. You're damn right it's not. I love my wife and I love my son. Absolutely, with no equivocations. And that's none of your f- business either. Uh, I'd like to have a room for the evening, please. Okay. That line prophetic. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. This card was declined. Declined. This is a brand new card. Try it again, please. Yes, sir. You know, maybe it's not activated yet. Thank you. Run this one, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. So back in the day, right? No. We had people have money, very money but with I'll them. Try to get no, today, thank you. This seems so all much right, more. We're to phase two of the training ops. Selby's going to brief you on this. So listen up, all right? We're going to be following the subjects through the square. We're going to have three listening stations. He's and two surveillance units with unidirectional mics. Pratt, you're three. 
Jones, Fiedler, crew, you guys are at ground level. You'll be following the targets. You move when I say, you go when I say. All handoffs go on my command. Now, for the uninitiated, if we don't have line of sight, we can't hear what they say, right? IRS contacted me this I think they got the legit piece of warrant on this. say my lifestyle exceeds my income. Uh, being audited? For the last four years. What's going on, Bobby? That's interesting. All right, so... So much going on in this scene that I'm kind of confused a little bit. So how are that room full of young people supposed to represent the government? Government. Is I that think, normal? I think that, no, I think that was like a not a misconception, but like the techies and the nerds and the geeks, right? Yeah. Those were in the cyber. Scene. It was a um, there was a transition from. When we talk about technology, those that were in charge for the government and all of that, right? Um, so the new folks coming in, right? The young people. Um, I think that that's a. I think it's a little legit, but there still should be an overarching command, somebody there that kind of uh, looks the style, looks the part of what we're traditionally used to seeing. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, definitely back in the late '90s for sure. I mean, that's kind of who who it was thought to be, and I mean. I guess I was technically one of those folks as well, but, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, are you, are you, so I was like, I was just looking at all the actors, how young they were. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm older than some of them. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So as I was looking at that video and it, it just felt like you said earlier, Alfred, that it just seemed a lot of surveillance. Yeah. Um, well, because we didn't, we weren't carrying around a smartphone back then. I mean, that was just collecting all this data all the time for everywhere we go and who we interact. I mean, like if you actually just install these apps and and just let them run, and and don't really, and you just click agree and yes to everything, the amount of data they collect is insane. I mean, they literally will listen to what you're talking about with your spouse or significant other. And then the next day, ads start popping up for some conversation you were having. Like, that's creepy as hell. Oh. Um, but, Especially, you know, back back when this movie was made, they, this data didn't exist. They had to they had to collect it in real time. So when you think about like um, on your phone, right, I do. Every, if it can't be done through my phone, it's probably not going to be done. I mean, unless I'm working on a <laughs> computer. Um, but if you think about it, right, like your my charts and all that. Just pull out all the apps, all your social media that you go to throughout the day and say, there's an hour that I was at the doctor's office, right? But you're on your my chart, but just think how globally connected all that information is and how it wasn't before. And we had to go <laughs> collect it. But yeah, it's like, you know, I, I go to the, I got my Target uh, or whatever retail store I'm in for doing my shopping at Amazon. Um, but if you block out those times throughout like a day's course, Man, that's a lot of time to share all that information or have that capability to share that information with everybody. Yeah. It just blows my mind that how much information, how much data is getting pushed across, whether it's private sector or public sector, how much is getting collected and it's going somewhere, right? It's it's getting processed somehow. It's you know, just I'm not about it. It, it's just freaky a little bit to me because I'm like, I, yeah. ain't, I ain't nobody, but at the same time, I am somebody, right? Like, it's somebody the, the, the information is valuable or will be valuable to somebody at some point in time. That's it. Everybody's got an agenda, man. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, no, that totally makes absolute sense, guys. So, okay. So I know we can't watch the entire movie, guys. Otherwise, it's going to be a five-hour Chatty McChatterson with us. I just want to <laughs> highlight a couple of the, some fun little things to talk about. So any last thoughts on, you know, of the clips that we've seen? Where do you feel like technology back in the 1998, where we're at here uh, in the, the 20s? Oh, my God, we're in the 20s. We're in the roaring next generation 20s. I see. You know, I think some of the things they were doing in there were relatively believable when you think about the resources that the federal government has and had back then. I mean, I, I think, you know, probably 75 percent of it was within the realm of believable and what was available to the U.S. government at that time. But what's crazy is you just fast forward now and these 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 capabilities exist for uh, the the 
the 13 year old hacker wearing the, you got to have the black hoodie. You have to have the hoodie, but it's <laughs> available to that person, you know, and, uh, or, or you can just go online and buy it for a hundred bucks or, you know, yeah. whatever else. So I, you know, you don't, you don't need the, the power and capability of the, of a state government to, to do this today. And it's been what, 35 years. Is it 30? No, 25. Yeah. Something. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. No, it's the relevancy today is, uh, the where technology was and where it's at now is that's it. it it's all at our means and uh that's why i think it's so important you know when you're on like this isn't a marketing pitch i'll just throw that out there right now but back in the day before i worked at checkpoint when i'm on the customer side um i took pride in what i did but more importantly if there was a tool that i was using and i really believed it that was my tool and that's what I used. And I was, you know, a hundred percent ingrained into, um, you know, whatever verdict it had uh, at the end. Well, now looking back, right. There's a lot of folks that say, well, you know, you said this earlier, uh, Cy, um, you can do X amount of throughput. Cool. I think everybody can do X amount of throughput. And when I think of tools and solutions, Oh, you can do this. Cool. Well, you can do that as well. However, now, when I think, you know, I've always thought this back in the day, but it's more important today, but not every tool out there um, or solution out there um, does what it says. And we might not do everything perfect or everything right, but when you talk about true security, and that's our forte, and that's what we've built our company on, our, our DNA, um, that is absolutely uh, 100%. Like, that's an I'm in agreement with that, and that's something that is more important today uh it might not have been important you know a couple of years ago but just the way that we're connected the way that you see technology progress the way that uh the world is moving nobody can keep up with it so yeah i like to see some of the technologies that just break this stuff down for regular people you know if you read what's in some of these terms of services and eulas for all these apps that are available it Gosh. it's just crazy what you're agreeing to but nobody reads that like even if you're a lawyer you're probably not going to sit there and read that but i like like i like how android is doing it lately where in the play store they're getting very sp specific and explicit about the things that that app can do to your phone or the data it's collecting but you don't have to read the full eula it it highlights it for you at the beginning and now they're actually scanning the apps periodically and they'll say hey you haven't used this app in like a, a month so we're going to get rid of all the it had location permission we're going to turn that off it could see your pictures we're going to turn that off or you can just look at it and say you know what i don't even need that anymore uninstall so that kind of stuff is great i like seeing that and and hopefully you know technology providers will continue to do that to just make it easier to manage these things because maybe if it collects a week worth of that i'll live with it because i want the convenience but once i'm done with it like let's let's flush it let's get rid of it going to be more the awareness right that, that yeah awareness yeah oh, no, awesome guys i know we can keep talking on this and it was so much fun learning about you know Again, I had heard about Enemy of the State. Everyone told me, no, no, check it out, check it out. But you guys have really helped illuminate some cool little aspects. And, of course, Hollywood's going to sensationalize as much as they possibly can to uh, amp up the excitement factor of it. But, uh, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the stuff when we're doing about – when we're talking about cybersecurity and all that, it's pretty much desktop, not running around the cities with helicopters and all that stuff. I mean, we Don't wish. need it anymore. Don't need the helicopters. Nope. We wish. Kind of cool. <laughs> That's going to go like with Brad social. Like I agree on your social, like the social aspect of folks. Right. And yeah. how it's limiting itself now. Like, where does it go? Um, and I'm not normally one of those ones that feed off of it. But as time grows on, I don't know. I see myself more and more kind of wanting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, so I think there's different thresholds or levels, right. For everybody. But yeah, I think that's an interesting uh, topic. Well, it could okay. be one group that goes towards, you know, let's, let's be around humans again. And then another group may go opposite and say, well, exactly. I'm just going to live in the world of meta now. And, uh, and that's, that's my existence. That's my social existence. Another topic, right? Yeah. That's a whole right. other thing. Whole other something hour. tells me we're going to have to schedule like a part two, part three. <laughs> I might well just go ahead, you know, forget it. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to close out here and you guys just keep talking amongst yourselves. So how about that? All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Wizard of Oz is a is a good one. And I was thinking about the, like, you know, at the end, the facade 
with the mm-hmm. wizard cut, man, I've got a really good kind of script for each one of those areas all the way down to the facade. But that's for later. Oh, my God. Alfred, okay, you're back. You know you're back. Uh, I'm just going to make you <laughs> co host here. You just make it happen, my friend. So, Anytime. You guys are awesome. So, Brad, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And Alfred, of course, thank you for being that rock for me in Word of Wisdom. And quite frankly, because I have no idea what the hell Enemy of State was about. So thank you for sharing a lot of the insights. Guys, I think that will wrap it up for another episode of Checkpoint Real Talk. That's a wrap on today's episode of Checkpoint Real Talk. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and some of those other buttons to show us your appreciation. And if you want to learn more or have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time for another episode of Checkpoint Real Talk.